Hello and welcome again to another tutorial on test automation. Today we are going to see what is logging and what is the logging framework. So the logging framework that we are going to explore today is Log4j from Apache. It is an open source framework and you can use it for uh, checking whether your application is working fine and whenever the application fails, where the application is failing. So it will give you several messages on your console as well as the log file that you mentioned. So the first thing that you need to do is download log4j from Apache site. And I have opened this MVN repository site. If you Google it, you will find several sites. But I prefer the MVN repository from where you download this bundle. Once you download the bundle, a jar file will be downloaded in your downloads folder. Then you copy it in your preferred location and after that you have to copy one more file. You have to create one more file called log4j.properties. The log4j.properties file is what is shown over here. Yeah, this is how the log4j.properties file looks like. So this is our root logger here that I have highlighted. This is our root logger and this will have the logging level which is currently debug then here the first section is directing log messages to a log file and the second section is directing log messages to std out std out is nothing but your console here is where you mention the logging file name i have named it as c colon logging dot log the date format that will be displayed in the log messages will be of this type YYYYMMDDHHMMSS. So let's have a look at how to configure log4j in Eclipse. In Eclipse, you create a project, a Java project. I have named it as log4j. Then you go to log4j, right click on it, go to build path, and you configure your build path. Once you click on configure build path, you click on add external jars and you select the jar that you need then that jar will get added to your class path build path so this is where i have added my jar now i will show you how the how to add the properties file so the properties file you copy it at the root folder here is where i have placed my properties file now let's look into the program that I have created it is a very simple program it is just a demonstration of how the logging levels work in log4j so first I will explain you what logging levels are in log4j here are the five logging levels in log4j debug info warning error and fatal the order of logging will be first debug info warning error and fatal if you mention your default logging level as debug then all messages with debug info warning error fatal will be long if you mention info as your default logging level then debug messages will be skipped and info warning error fatal messages will be long now come back to the program and here i will explain you how i have created this program it is a uh, nothing but a simple class log4j where I have declared a final static logger object logger you can name this anything and I have made it equal to logger.getlogger and here we will mention the class name log4j.class because log4j is the name of my class file then I have included a main method in which I have put a property configure configurator.configure and here I have given the log4j properties file name this will link your properties file to your class then i have put several debug info warning error and fatal messages using the logger object so now let's have a look at how this works i have kept my default logging level as debug initially so all messages will be logged to the console as well as to the file running
After some time, the console window will get displayed. It's taking a long time. See, there you go. The console window has a date timestamp that is uh, taking the format from the um, log4j dot properties file. And here you see debug info warning error and fatal messages. Since our default logging level is debug. Now what happens if you mention the default logging level as error? This is just an example. I am showing you how the logging class, uh, how the logging level works. So now let's run the program again. So this time it logged only error and fatal messages. So it will skip debug, info and warning since we have given the default logging level as error. So it will log anything from error and from error it will go down and it will follow the hierarchy. So this is how uh, logging levels work in Java and Selenium and you can include this in your Selenium scripts as well. Um, you can put uh, messages wherever you have a qu uh, doubt or wherever you need to uh, give a log to the user stating that the, uh, this method has been executed or uh, completed successfully or an error has been logged in any particular method. So this is how log4j works and I have explained you about the log4j framework, log4j properties file and the uh, logging levels in log4j. So if you have any questions just um, send me a comment like this video and do subscribe to my channel so that you can keep watching all my future videos. Thank you so much.